to all about the popcorn my name is stephanie if you're someone who enjoys talking about film or in this case award shows how about clicking that subscribe button so as you can tell today i am here accompanied by my little sister desiree and i have forced her to watch the eight best picture nominees because i did not want to do this video by myself i know for a fact number eight spot will be the same one because she actually didn't even finish it so i'm assuming that will be your number eight <laughs> uh, which i think it's the number eight for most people all right guys uh we're gonna get through this because she has got to go to work i had no idea otherwise we would have filmed earlier but let's get on with this video i got my trust little notebook she's more modern she has her phone notes um so we have no idea what's on each other's list number eight is david fincher's make so i'm sure for you it's gonna be it's just probably boring <laughs> um so it really is kind of like a love story for like old hollywood it is technically great to look at it just wasn't for me i'm not the targeted audience i feel like if you are somebody who like really enjoyed citizen kane then you will also really like this movie because this is more of the behind the scenes towards that particular film i have not yet seen citizen kane i don't really feel like gary oldman deserved a nomination i still go to this point that delroy lindo deserved it or in that case they should have gave it to lakeith stanfield you know of course he did uh, get supporting for the movie that we'll get to later on mink is my number eight <laughs> i didn't find it interesting i didn't even finish it i started it this morning but no it wasn't for me even though i kind of like the story was a little bit interesting, but I just couldn't get myself to finish it. I think I only watched like the first 20 minutes. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing, I probably wanted to shut it off uh, within the first 20 minutes. I really had to force myself to finish watching this movie because I did not. I didn't want to watch I finished it though, but I did not want to. Moving on to number seven. I'm sure this is probably where we're going to start, you know, having differences in opinion. Maybe I, I'm assuming. Um, so it's just another one that I really didn't resonate with very well. I know it's very beloved. So let me go ahead and get on with my little speech. This is, a, of course, my own personal list and her own personal list. There's going to be differences. There's no right or wrong list, you guys. Just everybody is entitled to their own opinion. So don't get nasty in the comment section down below. My number seven is Judas and the Black Messiah. It is a wonderful story. Um, great, great performances. Uh, of course, Daniel Kaluuya will win uh, Best Supporting Actor. If he doesn't, we're going to be like, what the fuck? Uh, again, Lakeith Stanfield, um, he was also nominated for Supporting a Row in the same film, which is very, like, he should have honestly have been uh, he's the lead, obviously, in the movie. So he should have got that lead, and instead of had gotten Gary Oldman, we should have got him. The writing is great. Other than that, I wish we really, really had got more of a... Uh, Daniel Kaluuya in the film like I we just didn't get enough of him I know it is more of the story for the point of view of you know the mole that went to infiltrate the stuff but I really wish we would have got a little bit more of him okay I just peeked over and I saw like your things and you have like notes notes I, I do <laughs> I, I don't have my list I'm like whatever pops in my head but my number seven is Judas and the Black <laughs> I didn't think I thought for sure you would have had that one up higher. No, I really liked the story, but I loved watching it in the moment, but I wouldn't like watch it again if I had other options. I really loved their performance and it was like very entertaining to learn more of the history. It's just not one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before we keep going on, I do want to say that this year the best pictures they're actually all really really good i don't like absolutely hate that you know any other except for me i mean i don't hate it but i don't know what could have done without it <laughs> um obviously i don't know why we didn't just go ahead and get the full 10 movies because i would have loved for one night in miami mm -hmm. and of course ma Rainey's black bottom to be have been nominated because i absolutely love ma Rainey's black bottom but i guess they just don't really want the whole play type movies involved so my number six which honestly from here on down was really really hard to kind of put on there i think i had this one a little bit higher but then i kind of went with the whole not really rewatchable since so that's why i ended up putting no man land as my number six spot because even though i absolutely love the movie it is absolutely beautiful to look at it's going to invest 
picture. It's going to win Best Director. Well, right now, but it, it, everything is up, up, up in the air. We we we're, we have certainty, but at the same time, it's like, is it really? Cinematography, it's great. Um, it does feature real life a nomads. Don't mind Coco. She's barking away over there. Who knows what she's barking at? Um, and of course, Frances McDormand, she uh, gave out an amazing performance. You know, it's Frances. She gives great performances. But... As much as I do love the movie, I just don't see myself really rewatching it. It is a very like kind of here type of film. There's really no type of excitement going on, but it's super super interesting. Uh, I even recommend for her to go and live the nomad life for like six months to a year. I was like, I think you would, you would flourish from it. You would be great in it. Uh, but what's your number six? Okay, so I'm saying this. We didn't tell each other what our list was. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be way more different. different. Who knows about the other ones? Next up, but my number six is Nomadland. I just love the picture of how it is and the people around it, how they actually use nomad people. Is that? Yeah, that, nomads. The, and the nomads in it. And then it was very interesting to see how they live and how they travel everywhere. But like still working at the same time, like with like schedules and stuff. But I just, I, I just, <laughs> like you said, it's not something that I would rewatch. It's something where it's really nice to watch it one time, and over the time you'll still kind of think about it. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely one I do recommend if you haven't seen it. I mm -hmm. definitely feel it's worth a watch. Like if one of those that like, you watch it once and then you're good. Like if you really don't need to re you know visit it. But moving on to number five, right? Yes. Okay. I'll be laughing if the whole list is the same thing. <laughs> Right, so my number five is going to be Minari. Um, it is a 24 movie. Um, again, beautiful to look at. Great movie. Um, it's about you know the American dream and just the struggles coming and moving from another country, trying to find your you know settle roots and and just really try to figure things out for yourself, for your family overall. It's wonderful performances. I love the grandmother in this movie. And one of the interesting things about this year is that because of the pandemic, most of these more than likely wouldn't even have been, because they're more like indie type movies, probably wouldn't even have been nominated for a film, which is what a lot of people are saying that this year's probably like the weakest years and it sucks. But I honestly find it really interesting and I actually really like it because we are giving these smaller movies an opportunity to really flourish and show that, hey, you know what? I could be up here in the big lead. Again, not one that might be for everybody because it is very like, again, here. Most of them, honestly, they're like just here. There's really no big like dramatic uh -huh. deals, but definitely another great one. Is it the same? Yes, it is. <laughs> My number five is Minari. Because I did kind of the same thing where which one I would like to watch more or less. But I just thought the chickens were funny in this movie. <laughs> how they would like just look and check and like I'm like, how do they look? In their little trailer. Just practicing with the little chickens and the kids were funny. So number four, let's see if it continues all the way through. Number four is Sound of Metal. Is it yours too? No. Okay, we're, we're, we're different now. We're different. It's just another one that's just great filmmaking. Riz Ahmed, absolutely wonderful acting. It is another one that is a must watch. I mean, this just brings you, gives you more of a sense of what it is to lose your hearing. They really take you to that point of how it could possibly feel the struggles of trying to learn a new language trying to accept your new life imagine when it is part of your profession you know he is a musician he is a drummer so just he uh losing that part of your life is just like i mean just flips your world upside down i mean not to say that it's worse for him because he's a musician because obviously for everybody the relationship that he loses the friendship that he gains and just certain circumstances that also make him lose things again in life. I wish I had it up higher, but I do love the other things more than this. <laughs> well, my number four is The Father. Even though I really, I, I really love the movie and I would really love to rewatch it to see the changes mm -hmm. of his story, of, of his point of view and how 
all of a sudden I'll notice that little stuff is like changed around around the apartment and I would love to see like the extra details of how they did it and all that just very beautiful of how and very sad of how Shh, don't, no don't no no we're gonna bleep that out no we're, we're not gonna say what is happening a lot about the movie i feel like it's a movie that you definitely need to go in blind like we we didn't know anything about it so you can really appreciate it more yeah but it's a very beautiful movie yes all right guys before we do give you our top of three if you haven't already go ahead and give this video a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time i post something new moving on to number three which my number two and my number three, I was another one that I was really like, uh, about. And honestly, up until, yeah, I'm gonna leave it where it's at, number three. It's gonna be Promising Young Woman. I absolutely love this movie. It's one of the ones that is honestly one of the most different out of everything on here. It's just it's so fun, it's different, it's dark. Um, I love, 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 love the music that's involved in here. I mean, for crying out loud, we got freaking Paris Hilton's song back in the movie. I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of like the kids that are watching the movie had no freaking idea about the damn song. But I remember that song when it came out. I remember a lot of people didn't like it. I liked it. It's just absolutely wonderful. Carrie Mulligan, I don't know if she's going to win the Oscar at this point. I mean, she was a front runner. Might be Viola Davis, which I'm totally here for. It's just such a fun, fun movie. I, I really truly enjoyed it. So my number three is Promise a Young Woman. It used to be higher like my top two when I first started watching the movies but then these other ones just like topped it and I prefer to watch the <laughs> the others now than this even though it's like awesome it's like so cool but it's just how I'm feeling now. <laughs> <laughs> my number two, I closed my book again, you guys. My number two is The Father. Definitely has moved up, up on my list. Um, it is the last movie that I needed to watch to actually do this. I'm trying not to give you guys any kind of spoilers or anything because you really, really need to go into this movie blind. You just be prepared. I will let you know this. You will be confused for more than half the movie. You're going to be, until you really figure out what's happening. Oh, actually... I think when I did my monthly tier list, I may have said what was going on with him. Amazing performances. If Chadwick Boseman was not winning the Oscar, definitely should go to Anthony Hopkins because he did absolutely amazing. I mean, that final scene, you guys, alone, I think is why he officially got nominated. It's just... Oh, it just gets to you guys. It, I was not prepared to cry at all. Let's go ahead and keep going because, like, I don't want to give you more. Okay. <laughs> Who is your number two? My number two is The Sound of Metal. I don't know why, I just really like that. Mm -hmm. Other than more than the others, it's just something that <clears throat> I would love to rewatch. I just, I don't know, I found it like, like sad because he's like an adult when he loses his hearing and has to like struggle and has to go to learn sign with the little kids who are very learning and he has to like relearn basically everything mm -hmm. so just found it interesting number one we are there we went through this video pretty well very quickly of course is the trial of the chicago seven absolutely adore this movie i've seen it twice once by myself once with her when i again for sure to watch these and she loved it i um recommend this movie so many times it was one of my uh, favorite movies from last year i know most of these movies or technically came out last year but of course we didn't watch them to this year because of the pandemic uh, the script is absolutely amazing i just love the way everything was shot uh, from being in the courtroom to seeing what was happening you know in real well not real time but you know like the stories that were being happening uh, stories that were being told I love it. I love it. I will recommend this so many times. I recommend it to my dad. He loved it as well. That freaking judge. Judge. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is also based on a true story. But I stand by my trial of Chicago 7. I know a lot of people don't really love it as much as I do. But it's totally okay. Like I said, there's no wrong list. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. What is your number one? <laughs> The trial of the Chicago <laughs> Seven. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I was like, are you, are you, do, do you not notice that that was the only one? It's because she had 
messed up, you guys. Yeah, it's because my list, I was having trouble on the last ones, and I'm like, whatever feels right. And then I had spaced it, and I had two slots blinked, and I said it because they were blinking. That was the next one there. And so, then I'm like, yeah. I kind of forgot there. I got yeah. two into my store chart. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I just liked how everything was shot, and it was, I don't know, it's just not to explain how to explain because you basically said yeah, everything it's great movie um, yeah it's just awesome and then how it's all how you said it's like combining the assassination of mm -hmm. the other movie Judas and the Black, Black Messiah mm -hmm. it's just something that I would rewatch yeah more this is how we rank the eight best pictures for the 2021 year let us know down below how do you guys rank these eight movies or we you know maybe you didn't see all eight maybe you didn't have somebody to force you to watch them like i did but let us know down below again remember no list is the wrong list just everybody's entitled to their own opinion don't be nasty in the comment section down below until next time see you guys at concessions bye